So how many of you have seen an advertisement and then thought about it later that day after you've seen it on TV or something? Okay. So we all see advertisements every day, but some of you may not know exactly how they work. So I started learning about advertisements from the 1920s when I was in my history class last semester, and it got me really interested in like comparing the 1920s to advertisements today and seeing how it influenced modern advertisements. So today I'm going to talk about how the 1920s influenced modern advertisements. I'm going to also be talking about how the government is involved in advertising. I'm also going to be talking about the psychology behind advertising itself. So according to Eric Foner, who's an author of the history textbook I used called Give Me Liberty, um, the 1920s was kind of like a new society, like um, it was called the Roaring Twenties. And in the 20s, credit became really popular, and a lot of Americans went into debt because they started using credit to buy material items. And Hollywood movies also became really popular. A lot of um, people went to the movies and they kind of used it as an escape, just how we would use Netflix today after we take an exam, you know, everyone wants to go home and watch Grey's Anatomy. And celebrities were really idolized, like Babe Ruth and Charlie Chaplin, like they blew up and they became like the face of many, many products such as Coca-Cola. And it's kind of like how we idolize like the Kardashians today. Um, and instead of going to work for pride or to support their family, a lot of people started working so they could buy more things and they could show it off and like have a house full of stuff. Like in the 1920s was very, materialistic and the consumer market really exploded. So I'm going to be showing you some ads from the 1920s and comparing them to modern advertisements today. So the first advertisement is uh, featuring Babe Ruth, which was a famous baseball player, and it's a Red Rock Cola ad. And I compared it to this ad from Sprite, which has Drake in it, and I feel like it kind of like the main goal of putting these people on these ads is to kind of get people to think like maybe if I drink this, like it'll make me successful because both of these people were very successful in their time. And these are some more ads from the 1920s. Um, the first one is a shandy and it says down goes the thermometer. So the psychology behind that would be kind of, you know, drinking this product will keep me healthy. And then the soap ad is very familiar, like it's in a lot of ads we see today. Um, it says you can wash away fat and years of age, and that's more directed toward women. And it's just kind of like targeting insecurities within people. And then the Pepco toothpaste um, ad would be like, they started marketing insecurities, so using this toothpaste would get rid of bad breath from smoking cigarettes was the tactic they used there. And then I found this ad, which is a modern advertisement for Shape Razors, and it's a woman with a beard, and it's kind of like getting guys to think, like, it says, would you kiss you? So it kind of gets guys to think, like, would a girl want to kiss me if I had all this facial hair on my face, so would I want to kiss a girl that had a beard? Okay, now I'm going to be talking about how the government has been involved in advertising. Um, it has like more than you think. Um, this, so we all remember the Got Milk ads, right? Okay. So from when we were very young, we've been told, you know, to drink milk every day and it helps strengthen our bones and that's been proven. That's been kind of proven false over the years. Um, but according to Michael Moss from the New York Times, an article published in 2010, uh, Domino's sales were kind of low in that time, so they wanted to do something to sort of improve their sales, so they partnered with a company called Dairy Management, and they wanted to sell pizza that had 40% more cheese on it. And the Dairy Management Company was actually created by the U.S. Department of Agri Agriculture, so that just shows that the government is kind of more pushing calcium on us, and it just shows government involvement in advertising. And then next I'm going to be talking about psychology behind advertising and the techniques that are used. So according to the American Psychological Association, they published an article in 2002. Um, so the brain processes information in 
chunks. So if you have too many, Im too many images in an advertisement, it'll overload the brain. So you don't want to have too many flashing images. And in print advertisements, you want to have faces on the left side and text on the right. It kind of helps you lateralize it in your brain while you're reading it. And according to an article by Dr. William Clem from Psychology Today, published in 2014, social identity is a big tactic used in advertising. It just, and it's kind of what we saw with those ads from the 1920s, targeting insecurities. And social identity is like targeting your group in society. So this ad from Dunkin' Donuts is about finals week, and it kind of makes you feel like since you're a college student, you need to have coffee to survive finals week. And I'm sure we all visit Starbucks on campus pretty frequently. And the next thing I'm going to be talking about is ad tracking. So ad tracking is like, you know how when you get on the internet and you search something and later you get on Facebook and you see an ad for that thing that you searched? So, DoubleClick is a service used by Google. Um, and it uses your cookies, your search history, and your IP address to target ads to you specifically. And this was from Olivia Solon from The Guardian, published in 2016. So I actually, these are screenshots actually from my Facebook. So I was searching the other day, or probably last week, I was looking at Ford Escapes, and then I got on my Facebook yesterday, and there, were, uh, there was an ad for crossovers. So I wanted to kind of provide more information about how Facebook uses advertising. So they use a technology called the Facebook Pixel. And it can target ads from your web history. So if you view a web page that uses Facebook Pixel, it will like take products on that web page and put it on your Facebook page. And even if you download a mobile app <coughs> or made a purchase or just added a product to your shopping cart, it can put ads on your Facebook that way as well. So in conclusion, we have talked about how the 1920s influenced um, advertisements today, the role of the government in advertising, and we talked about the psychology behind the advertisements. So advertisements are something that we see every day, and I just wanted you guys to kind of understand more about how they work, or how they work, and the consumer world would be very different without advertising. Awesome, great job. Thank you.